I want to tell you one of my favorite stories about leadership uh, from the Bible. Um, I do a lot of uh, training and consulting and speaking to uh, churches, denominations, groups of pastors, nonprofit leaders, etc. And one of the exercises I like to walk people through is this idea of biblical leadership. I start by asking people to name uh, a leader from the Bible. Um, and I scribe on the whiteboard or whatever it is. And I hear the names that maybe you would expect that I would hear. Uh, Moses, Noah, Noah uh, Joshua, Peter, Paul. Um, uh, invariably, Jesus gets named in there. I have this big long list. If nobody else mentions it, um, I always say, let me add one name here. And I add uh, Pontius Pilate. And uh, usually there are boos or hisses. Uh, in the room when I add Pilate to the board. We get through 15, 20 names, whatever we generate, and then I say, okay, let's go back through the list and you tell me whether this person was a good leader or a bad leader. And so I'll say Moses and people will say, good. Uh, Noah, good. Joshua, good. Peter, good, etc. All these names, uh, people are labeling good. When I get to Pilate, people generally, almost always, say bad. Um, so we get through the whole list. And essentially, as you'd expect, all of the good guys are labeled as good leaders and the bad guy, uh, Pilate, um, Herod, if he gets up there or Pharaoh or somebody else, they're always invariably labeled the bad guy, uh, a bad leader. So then I look at the list and I say, I wanna make two changes here and then talk about this. And so I will change Pilate from a bad leader to a good leader. And I will change Jesus from a good leader to a bad leader, which always draws some laughs and some oohs. Uh, one pastor told me, I don't want to stand next to you at the judgment. But here's my point. What I walk people through is thinking about what is the metric? How are we deciding who is a good leader and who is a bad leader? And I'll tell them, let's look at Jesus. Jesus had a ministry for three years on earth. And at the end of that three years, what did he have to show for it? When he went to the cross, he had no followers, no church, no ministry, uh, no funds, no building, no nothing. He had nothing. And I asked the pastors, if at the end of three years of your ministry, you had no church, no building, no followers, etc., would you be considered a success? The answer is clearly no. You'd be considered a failure if you're starting a business, running a nonprofit, doing a church, whatever the organization is. If you spent three years investing in it and had essentially nothing to show for it at the end, you would not be considered a good leader. On the other hand, consider Pilate. Pilate, uh, in his position in the Roman uh, hierarchy, had two main responsibilities uh, over his jurisdiction. One was to collect ta taxes. Uh, history shows that Pilate was extremely good at collecting taxes. He collected taxes, he increased taxes, he collected more taxes. He collected taxes very faithfully, very efficiently, very effectively. He generated money for the Roman government. His second responsibility was to avoid conflict over the people that he was ruling. Uh, avoid riots, avoid rebellions and insurrections. History also shows that Pilate was really good at this. So Pilate had two main responsibilities, collect taxes and avoid rebellion and riots. And he was very good at these things. He was a very good leader. Now, we know Pilate as uh, the one who crucified Jesus, which is bad, that's bad. But think about that even. In that last week of Jesus' life, when he shows up in Jerusalem and Palm Sunday's going on, you know Pilate doesn't have his head in the sand. He knows what's going on here. This is not going to be the first time he's heard of Jesus. What he would have heard through his network of spies, through um, asking questions, is that Jesus performed miracles. He healed people. Sight to the blind, the lame can walk, the deaf are healed, uh, leprosy is cured. He brought the dead back to life. He also, uh, he also feeds people uh, and he teaches. He's had all these opportunities, all these big crowds, and he has never once gave any indication that he wants to rebel against Rome. So Pilate doesn't care. Now Jesus comes to Jerusalem. There are 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of people here for the Passover. Big parade. Pilate is watching this. And every night, Jesus goes out to Bethany. He comes back in the next day, teaches in the temple courts, goes home, comes back, goes home, comes back. So by the time he comes to Pilate for trial, Pilate is thinking, this guy is not really a threat. But the Jewish leaders say, he claims to be the king. Pilate has to investigate this. He's like, oh, is he setting himself up as king? So he asks some questions. Are you the king? Jesus says, you say it is. Pilate asks him a bunch of questions. And at the end, Pilate says, I got no problem with this guy. Jesus says, my kingdom's not of this world. And Pilate says, all right, you can have whatever kingdom you want, as long as it's not in conflict with the Roman kingdom. So I find no fault in this guy. I want to release him. I don't care. There's nothing going on here. This is effective leadership. Then the Jewish leaders stir up the crowds. And now the situation has changed for Pilate. Because with hundreds of thousands of people in Jerusalem, he may be able to quell the situation if it turns into a riot or a rebellion, but it's going to be bloody and it's going to be ugly. And he's going to look bad in front of the Roman government. So instead, what he does is he says, why, why shouldn't I release this guy? He's totally innocent. And they say, kill him, kill him, release the other guy who actually was the leader of an insurrection. Pilate's like, well, I got two choices. I can release this one guy and keep track of him so he doesn't start trouble again. Or I can release this guy and the whole crowd's going to whip into a frenzy and start a riot. Okay, I'll, I'll kill this guy. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm going to fulfill my responsibilities to my organization. Again, we look, at back, we look back at this and we think, Pilate was a terrible leader because he crucified the Son of God. Well, what's your metric? How are you evaluating what a good leader is? It's so one of the things we cover in this course is who am I? What is my value system? How do I decide what to do and what not to do as a leader? I have to make these decisions just like Pilate did and just like Jesus did. Who are you? And how are you trying to lead, my friends?